Hey guys, this is Oscar doing another weekend project. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and change the inner and outer tie rods on a 2004 Toyota Sequoia. Uh, now it is recommended to change your tie rods um, in pairs. I'm going to show you a quick way to uh, uh, change them out today. And one of the reasons why I'm changing them out is because of this. Always remember to put your car or truck on jack stands. But check this out. I don't know if you can hear this. And one way to check if your uh, tie rods are bad, especially the inner ones, is you put your hand on the 9 o'clock position and at 3 o'clock and you shake it back and forth. I don't know if you can, if, I don't know if you can hear this. See, see that how it has a little bit of play. So that's the reason why I'm gonna go ahead and change the inner tie rods. All right, enjoy. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and remove the wheel. Alright guys, so again, I just want to kind of uh, touch bases. This is the uh, tie rod end, and this is underneath this um, protective booth is the inner tie rod. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, change them both out, and I'll show you why. I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to um, tilt uh, the inner tie rod back and forth so that way you can see the movement in here, okay? So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, guys. Just want to go over a couple tools I'm going to use today. Um, you will need a 24 uh, millimeter uh, wrench to take the lock nut out. You have an option to use a um, inner tie rod remover set. Um, these are not expensive. I got this for about 40 bucks at a Harbor Freight. Um, again. This is just to remove the inner uh, tie rod. It's optional, but for this truck, you do have the option just to use a um, adjustable uh, wrench. So I'll kind of go over that once I get to that part, okay? And if you're wondering um, what parts I'm using, uh, here's a part number. This is for the tie rod end, and it does come with uh, the castle nut um, grease fitting and a cotter pin. In there and this is the uh, um, part number for the inner tie rod right there and again it comes with everything you need locking that here all right so let's go and get started all right guys just want to mention one more thing whenever you're working or changing anything uh, in your suspension just keep in mind you will need an alignment afterwards I'm gonna try my best to try to get it back to where you know it was but again it varies from part to parts but um, just keep that in mind you will need a uh, alignment done after you do any type of suspension work so the first thing that we're gonna focus on is we're gonna use this um, 24 millimeter uh, wrench we're gonna take out the locking nut here um, normally I just use this with the hammer um, to try to try to kind of free uh, free free it loose. If it's too hard with the hammer, I normally use uh, a little bit of PB blaster put on it. But let's see if uh, I have any luck today. And again, you can use any type of hammer. So wow. Perfect. And again, I'm just gonna set aside here. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and take this uh, this cotter pin. 
right here. So I'm going to use my di diagonal pliers to get that out. Alright. Alright guys, next step I'm going to take out this castle nut. I'm going to use a 19 millimeter deep socket or you could use a short socket as well um, you could use a um, a ratchet but I kind of have the luxury of using uh, a impact uh, ratchet so I'm gonna remove this here real quick okay in case you're wondering so what I'm using here to take that out. All right. So another another option to use your hammer to hit this uh, this is kind of like part of the knuckle, or you could uh, use uh, a tie rod puller, whichever you want to use. Um, it's kind of up to you. So for today, I'm going to use this tie rod puller, and this one. I will use a, um, a ratchet. Let me see here. Okay, it's 19. So the trick is just to tie it to the tie, lower tie rod. I mean the tie rod end kind of breaks loose. So let's get that get that out of the way oh you know what it was pretty loose already wow saved me the trouble so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this just make sure that the way you removed it like this you kind of have an idea I'm gonna tell you why because the next step remember I told you how um, you will need an alignment afterwards to kind of get you close to the alignment uh, we're gonna we're gonna count the turns so I'm going to count the turns uh, right now to see kind of like how how many um, I'm going to have to put it back in the reverse order, okay? So let me go ahead and do that right now. Alright guys, just want to show you something really quick. Before I make the turn on this um, tie rod end, I want to see if you can hear the sound. And I'm going to actually take off the protective booth, this one, so I can show you what's going on. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm, I'm pulling this back and forth it's like a sound there but let me show you a little bit what I'm talking about um, we're gonna take the clamp on this protective booth take it out like so and then I'm gonna use my diagonal pliers normally this uh, like a metal clamp here but I guess someone did work on this I'm gonna this is this looks like a siblet tight. I'm just gonna chop it off real quick. Okay. I'm gonna remove this. Okay, this is a rack of pinion, but I wanna show you where I think the issue is. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. This is uh um I don't know if you can see this, but this is a um inner uh tie rod. This is where I was telling you about you could use um, the tie rod end tool or you could use a, um, a adjustable wrench to get uh, to clamp onto this and then turn it. Um, but I just want to show you something real quick. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to pull on this. See if you get hear the noise. Um, is, see, how, see how wobbly this is? It should not be this wobbly it should be literally stiff so all that play and again this is what goes bad in here um, I don't know if you can see I'm pulling it back and forth let me see here see all that um, stuff in there it should not be moving see that so this is why my wheel was going back and forth so let's go ahead and uh, continue changing this 
Alright guys, now I'm going to count how many times uh, I have to turn this back when I put it in reverse order, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, take this out real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I'm going to do 20 uh, turns. And again, it's going to be kind of close enough, okay? All right, so the next step, I'm going to take this uh, locking nut out so I can remove the protective booth there. Put these aside. Okay. And again, kind of give you a more in depth picture. This is where, I don't know if you can see the play there, but let's see. That's what, that's just making the whole, my truck um, kind of move a little bit, okay? So the next, the next thing we're gonna do, in order for us to take this out, um, we have to use a flat head screwdriver. Here we gotta take these, um, this is a, also a lock, kind of like a, nut it was not a nut but it's kind of like a flat nut so i'm gonna use my hammer and my uh screwdriver to kind of put bend this uh this way okay so let me get and do that real quick i can't do it one hand but i'll kind of show you all right guys I already unstaked the other side so this is the last one i'm gonna unstake this is what i was talking about make sure if uh yours comes with a back flat lock nut to remove this uh, unstake it otherwise you're gonna you know be here for a while so let me show you how to again I'm using a uh, flathead screwdriver and a hammer uh, to unstake this here like so just to make sure it's free when I take out the inner tie rod okay it's also here from the bottom and remember when you install the inner tie rod you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to stake this because uh, the inner tie rod comes with the new uh, flat lock nut so you're gonna go through here and hit it with the hammer and stake it back okay so let me go ahead and finish this up and then we'll can we'll go to the next step okay guys time to take the inner uh tie rod out so again you do have the option to use a adjustable wrench uh basically it just goes here unfortunately this uh, adjustable wrench is too small um it won't fit there uh, i also discovered that my tie rod and tool the way it works um i have these uh uh, I guess you would say kind of like nuts they will fit in here um, but you will kind of place it like I don't know if you can see this here and then you will lock it and then the whole concept is for this to go in here and uh, it'll go through it but as you can see it's too small so luckily I have a solution again all you have to do is just get a, a bigger this is a 12 inch uh adjustable wrench i'm pretty sure if you get like an eight, 18 inch um you know it's gonna have a bigger a bigger width diameter so you can just, just put it in there and then turn it um so for today i'm gonna use uh my uh mayhew pro um inner tie rod remover um the way it works 
it does have like these teeth that will kind of like bite down here and then once you turn it um, you know it'll turn itself so uh, let me go ahead and get this here kind of put it in there real quick okay all right make sure it bites there like so and then I'm gonna turn it uh, this way I'm gonna get a, a wrench here give me one second all right guys I almost have it out there you go and now it should freely just turn by itself remember this was on here like so has like little backing like a backing plate and this was in here so now what I normally do is just clean this out a little bit and again look look how how much play this is literally so what I like to do next um, I like to kind of compare the new one with the new one right here with the old one kind of make sure they're equal lengths I don't know if you can see this just kind of like compare them side by side and they looked about the same all right so next step we're gonna install this in reverse order again um, the new inner tie rod comes with a new um, flat locking nut and just like I took this one out I'll make sure that these little things are facing the inside those grooves those little edge things so like that and I'm gonna hand tighten this Let me first get it, get it inside Okay, now that it's inside, see how nice and stiff this is. Hold on. Let me lock it up here. Okay. And again, once we tighten this, this is going to be at, uh, you're going to tighten this at 76 uh, foot pound. Um, I have, again, the luxury of having uh, this inner rod tool. It's just going to go inside like so. And then I'm going to use a, a wrench here and I'm just going to turn it. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it up. And again, it's going to be a 76 uh, foot pound. And again, I just want to show you look how stiff this is. And we'll move. I mean, if I force it, it'll move. But look, that's how it should be. What I'm going to do right here, I'm just going to make sure I grease the turn it sideways grease inside there that way it can be nice and grease before I put it inside all right so the next step is uh, let me torque this down I'm gonna stake this and then I'll come back guys I did forget to mention um, I did take this out and I forgot use some um, thread lock uh, put a little bit of put a little tab on the new one and then uh, once you put like a little tab in there, just put it in there. Uh, very important, use some uh, Loctite, okay? Um, I forgot that step to mention it. Again, this is a new one. I took it out and put some uh, thread lock on there and uh, put it in there. Thread lock, don't forget. All right, guys, now that we have uh, staked the um, flat lock nut, 
to the new one we're gonna go ahead and put the protective boot on um, since I did rip out the ziplock tie I'm gonna get another one basically I'm just gonna snug it in here like so I don't know if you can see that and I'm just gonna cut the whatever loose so let me go ahead and install this really important don't forget to put this in because you definitely don't want any type of residue to be going into into your um, inner tie rod or the racket painting okay so for now I'm just gonna let it let it sit there and then I'll come in put the um, clamp back on don't forget to put this bad boy on like so okay and then we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, new lock nut and I always like to put a little bit anti-seize on the threads here so that way it doesn't seize up over time depending on where you live I know Russ could uh, play a big role in there so you don't have to put a whole lot I already put a little bit on here but just enough so that way um, you, know, you can have that peace of mind it doesn't get stuck on you all right okay all right guys last step um, make sure you torque this to 67 foot pounds of crown nut and then once you torque it make sure um, you put the cotter pin in and go ahead and uh, you know close this up and the and the rest um, this one you're going to torque it to 41 foot pounds um, once you uh, uh, time this up make sure you definitely uh, snuggle this in um, again 41 all right guys hope you enjoy this video um, again um, pretty easy job it took me maybe like uh, 20 minutes to do so just uh, don't forget to uh, uh, tying up the zip, zip lock um, tie here cut the loose ends that way this doesn't um, you know move around and uh, don't forget to put this uh, clamp back on and again uh, torque this to 41 foot pounds and 67 uh, foot pounds don't forget the cotter pin all right guys hope you enjoyed this video like always thanks for watching and have a blessed day all right guys just want to show you um almost forgot don't forget to uh put grease on the uh, tie rod end before you uh install it but i just want to kind of uh kind of show you when we first started this had a lot of play now check this out nothing no play this is what i'm doing it's not moving it's not budging see so that kind of repairs my issue again thanks for watching and uh and have a great day